is, um, they will be used. And so, anyway, I just hope that you all enjoy our program this evening. And before we start, John's going to start us with a word of prayer. You guys could bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, there's so much we can learn from the life of Christ. We can read the Gospels time and time again and come up with new insights into who you are. Tonight I pray that your Holy Spirit will come down, touch us as actors with clay in your hands, put your breath of life in us and help us to create a living word in a sense. And please touch the hearts of the audience here. May they see a new picture of Christ, maybe gain some new understandings into who you are. We love you and thank you. Amen.
losing her reputation, family, and the man that she was about to marry. It took incredible faith and courage to do what she did. Now, the angel also visited Joseph, her husband to be. He too believed and married this lovely young girl who was already with child by the Holy Spirit. years old. He had just been baptized by John and was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had never heard anybody speak like he did. It was then that he began his ministry and he created quite a stir. He filled us with the love of God and brought reality and power and excitement into our humdrum lives. He came into our little town to teach us and turned our lives upside down.
said, follow me. He wasn't calling us to an easy life. Becoming fishers of men called for life-changing commitments from ourselves and from our families. Jesus, we didn't yet realize who we were really dealing with, with and the extent of the power of God in his life. But our eyes began to open when we went with him to a wedding in Cana. It was the most incredible thing that I had seen up to that point. They had run out of wine, and the host was about to be terribly embarrassed. Jesus' mother, Mary, brought the servants to him and said, just do whatever he tells you. Then she just walked away, confident that Jesus would solve the problem. Well, he had them take six stony jars, fill them with water, and draw some out of it, and take it to the steward. It had miraculously turned into very good wine. Nobody, nobody would have dreamed that he could do that. <laughs> Except his mother, this woman. What an impact she had on my life. If you want to know how to find favor with God, you cannot find a better example than this lady. She knows the way. <laughs>
saw him turning water into wine, healing the sick, the blind, the deaf, even casting out demons. But not only were the things that Jesus did marvelous, the things he said were staggering. Listen to some of the words he had to say about himself. <coughs> the Father and I are one. Which one? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And whoever hears my words and puts his trust in him who sent me has everlasting life. And, and he will not be judged, but has already passed from death to life. Is it any wonder the religious leaders came to hate him? And he talked about being born again. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But how can a man be born again? Well, Jesus was talking about our lives receiving a new life through God's Spirit when we believe in His Son. Tell me how the wind blows, tell me where the wind goes, you hear it singing through the skies. You can't see what you feel, but you know that it's real, like the spirit in your heart that softly sighs. Born again, you must be
only son died. Jesus had compassion on her and simply walked in and raised him from the dead.
much to learn from Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to learn your lessons second hand and not have to take all the punishment yourself. I learned one of my greatest lessons about the kingdom of God through those two wonderful brothers, James and John, the ones Jesus called the sons of thunder. And oh, by the way, their mother as well were chosen to work as their agent. <laughs> had set them straight, he began to teach all of us what it really takes to be a great person in the kingdom of God. He said that among the heathens, the kings are tyrants, and each minor official lords over those beneath him. But among you, it's quite different. Anyone wanting to be the leader among you must first be your servant. And if you want to be right at the top, you must serve like a slave. Your attitude, he said, must be like my own, for I, the Messiah, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Passover came near, the people of Jerusalem saw Jesus, this miracle-working rabbi, come into the city humbly riding on a young donkey. 
They ran to throw palm branches and flowers in front of him, and some of them even took their cloaks and put them on the road right in front of him. They went absolutely wild. <laughs> determined to make him their king. But Jesus knew that it wasn't yet time for him to be king. God's plan for him just then wasn't rulership, but death. He, he tried to make us understand, but we just couldn't grasp it. As we shared our last supper with him, he tried to show us what his coming death was all about. A sacrifice for the sins of this world? Jesus, Judas was desperate with remorse. 
and tried to undo what he had done. He went back to the elders and the priest and threw down the betrayal money down at their feet.
bowed his head and gave up the ghost, and we watched the blood run down his broken body, and we began to understand the meaning of the bread and the wine. We realized that he did not have to go through this. God had laid upon him the sins of the whole world, and he had gone quietly as a lamb to be sacrificed. We were watching the greatest act of love the world has ever known.
They took him down, his poor dead body, and prepared him for his burial. They took him down, his poor pale body, taking his life away, ashen, and stained with his bloodline. His healing hands now pierced and still. Serving hands that once broke five loaves to feed five thousand. Holy hands often folded in fervent prayer. His poor, gentle hands now pierced and still. His torn feet, bloodied and cold. Feet that walked weary miles to bring good news to broken hearts. Feet once washed with my own tears. His poor torn feet, bloodied and cold. His kingly head made for a crown, crowned with thorns. Oh, his poor kidney hat crowned with thorns. And his gentle breast, pierced by his fair crust, quiet and still. His poor, loving breast. His piercing eyes, dark and blind. Eyes full of compassion. Born in the soul. Fiery eyes burning at sin. But gentle eyes begging sinners. His piercing eyes blind and dark. His matchless voice, fountain of the Father's thoughts. Stopped and still to speak no more. Silence now, where once had flowed wisdom and comfort, hope and life. Its matchless voice stopped to speak no more. They took him down, his poor dead body, and prepared him for his burial. And so, we buried him. And we thought that was the end. It was only the beginning. <laughs>
crucified is still both Lord and Christ, the Messiah, and there is salvation in no one else. So repent and return to God so He can wash away your sins and mine. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has this life, but he who does not have the Son does not have this life. So confess Him as Christ and Lord in your life. Be born again and receive this life from Him.